Kyle Belay. I'm going to do another dime cast today on sharp architecture. In the last one we did a quick introduction and I said I would follow up with a search interface. We're going to do some searches for songs. Well, um, the, such is the nature of the internet. I lied to you. People on the internet lie to you. I'm not going to be talking about a search interface today. Instead, I'm going to be going through some of the intricacies of the Sharp project. I figure it's good to get that out of the way early so you can get an understanding of, of what you get with it. Um, also, the other reason is because I've tried over the last couple of weeks to try to do one that's more code-centric and uh, having no end of issues. So I want to prove to myself that I can actually say something meaningful within 10 minutes. If you recall from the last one, once you create the project with the template, you just need to change your connection string to whatever it's supposed to be. You'll notice I'm now playing with a light on dark theme. We'll see how long it lasts. Also notice new computer. This one's named Gem because you know that she's excitement. Once you've done that, you switch over to your application here, and this is what you get. You notice a slight difference with the home page, and we ran through a template that would allow us to um, show a list of songs. Okay. I want to go through um, the project structure while I'm waiting for this list to load up here. We went over it fairly quickly last time, and you know, this one expands out a little further than the space allowed. Let's expand it out went over fairly quickly and there have been some slight changes to it since the last time. Most notable, um, your application services here. There's some discussion um, on the discussion board on um, the use of application services. By default, your song, your controllers will have injected into them with the templates an actual I repository of the domain object you're passing in. Um, my personal preference is to, um, instead of doing that, put in some sort of service, an application service, like a song song creation service, and um, have that take the, the repository. Okay, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but that's where the service would reside. We'd have a song creation service that would basically give you stuff required for this page here. Okay? The reason I prefer that is because when we go to, say, the edit page here, or the, the brand new page to edit this, you know, this may need to be, uh, for example, a list of genres that we've got listed from the database. Okay, so we, we're passing in the song data plus some extra data. Okay, stuff that we're not going to get from a song repository. And in my experience, it's very rare that you're going to get stuff from one single repository to display on here. So I like just putting in a service in there that takes all the repositories that it's going to need. And, um, and I, actually, why am I defending myself? That's the way I like to do it. I don't need to impress you people. In any case, the application services project is there for that purpose. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is, actually, I, I do need to make a correction here. Um, in the last episode, I mistakenly uh, attributed this bit of magic here to uh, Ben Sharman. I mispronounced his name. His name is actually pronounced uh, Bean Sharman, so apologies, Bean, for doing that. Um, one of the other things that we get with our Sharp Architecture project is um, some validation, which I skimmed over pretty quickly. Now, when I created this object here, um, I specified that I want the title to be the domain signature, which means that in order for um, one song to be identical to another one, its titles need to match. Okay, well, there's plenty of titles that, that it's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, but also notice that we've got the, this other attribute. This is using the end hibernate validators. There's uh, lots of discussion on um, validation, what we should be doing with validation with Sharp Architecture. Um, I've skimmed over most of it because validation ranks slightly below security in the list of topics that bore me to death. So if, if, if it turns you on, by all means, go check it out. 
this is how it works right now and I'm reporting the facts. So the title is specified as not null and not empty. Okay, so that means when we go to create a brand new song or in fact if we change the title to be empty and we try to save it, then we get some validation built in here. Switch to red, it says this may not be empty. We get this nice little default message that says may not be empty. Not the prettiest thing to do, but it's templating. You can pretty it up all you want. Okay, so other validation that you get with this is basically anything you get with the end hibernate validation. So if you want to uh, check out the constraints you get with end hibernate, we'll see what we've got here. We've got things like validating whether it's an IP address, uh, specify the maximum, the specify the length, whether it's an email address, whether you've got digits, anything you get with the end hibernate validator. So if you're not familiar with it, as I am not, then I encourage you to check it out. If you don't like the end hibernate uh, validation, there are other mechanisms um, with sharp architecture that I'm sure we'll get to in um, other dime casts. That's a nice little segue to the documentation because you get quite a bit of documentation, you know, even for a commercial project, and this isn't, this is an open source project. You get over 50 pages of, of documents, including a tutorial uh, as the sample project, how to configure for IIS 7 and IIS 6. Any sort of tidbits that have come out of the discussion group, it appears, have been putting on here, and uh, with any luck, by the time you see this, this will all be online nice and Googleable. Final thing I want to talk about is the uh, persistence, auto persistence here. In the last one we were using, I showed you the Fluent and Hibernate map to map our song class to the table. Now by default what you get is, well, no mapping at all. It's done through an auto persistence mechanism, which is also part of Fluent and Hibernate. And again, I'm not going to pretend to know the uh, intricacies of auto persistence, but what this does is any entities within this class's assembly, which is our domain class, flamingo.core, and it will try to map all our entities to the database tables, to corresponding database tables. So provided you have a table called song and all the, the attributes um, or the properties match up with the columns, then it'll be able to do that. As long as your uh, table and your class structure matches some convention, it will be able to do this. And you can use um, all of this to talk about how the conventions map up. You can change what those conventions actually are. We get some default ones here um, with the Sharp Architecture template. And hopefully in a future timecast we can go into the details, if not me, then somebody, um, and that's a hint to James Gregory, who is the uh, most likely candidate. That's about it. That's all I'm going to talk about. Final note here. It's not Bean Shireman who did this. It's Ben Sherman is, is how you pronounce his name. Flux88.com. Um, please check it out. He does some good stuff on NBC and, and Hibernate and, and all kinds of stuff. It's a great blog. So in the meantime, um, in the next one, I hope we're going to talk about the T4 templates. We'll talk about how we can change this to what I really want it to be using the templates to auto-generate that. So until then, have a good time.